people, what is going on? This is like a Spartan Killer and welcome to Nixon being outside. So, we have what is called Universal Yums. I don't even know if you can get that. I don't even know if you can read it. It's a bright freaking box. So it says, Universal Yums, snack like a local. Now, what that means, oh, maybe I showed you guys my address. Let's, let's retake that. There you go, Universal Yums. I don't even know if you can see that. You probably couldn't even see uh, that. All right, so I decided to switch seats <laughs> because I can watch Nyx. Um, so Universal Yums is pretty, oh, I, I don't feel good. <laughs> it might be good, I don't know. Um, what Universal Yums is, is Universal Yums is taking uh, foods from other parts of the world and shipping it directly to your door. Now what that means for you is that I get to experience another country in the comfort of my own home. I get to experience the cuisine of another country from the comfort of my home. Now, from what I understand, I believe that this one is called um, Indonesia, if I'm pronouncing that right. And I don't quite know that much about Indonesia. I'm kidding, I know that it's Indonesia. Uh, uh, as far as how to say it, I think that that's what this is. But um, what I'm really worried about is that they eat bugs over there. <laughs> that's kind of like my main... Oh... Uh, I just went, I just went pee, and as I was sitting there, I was like, what am I doing with my life right now? <laughs> I hate trying new stuff. I'm very cheeseburger, fries, done kind of guy. If this stuff is crazy, oh, it's a time for a new adventure. Oh, it's a Russia. Okay, sweet. Okay, so it's not Indonesia, it's Russia. Check that out. Russia. Well, hello, my friend. Oh, look at that, they have... Russia trivia! 10% of this sale of oh, 10% of Russia's government income comes from the sale of vodka, guns, yada yada yada. Okay, cool. So there's trivia. What's inside? Okay, so then they give me a whole bunch of stuff. So wow, there okay, so it looks like a whole bunch of desserts. Awesome. Uh make an authentic Russian recipe. And then explore the hidden sites of Russia. And then read a famous Russian poem. Um, and then listen to a Russian music playlist, and then clue to next month's box. Far, far away lies the Emerald of the Equator. Now independent, the Dutch were once their invader. They left behind a legacy of many good eats, ginger cookies, chocolates, and barley mint sweets. Okay, so, um, I really love how they did this like the Russian flag. That is freaking awesome. Mad props to you, Universal Yums. Mad freaking props. Let's open this bad boy up. Let's take a little look. Oh my god, I don't know what these are. Who are these guys? <laughs> Alright, so it looks like a whole bunch of candy and maybe some chips. I don't know what that says at all. Is it, Did they like eradicate bird flu over there? Am I going to get some sort of bird flu stuff? Let's go ahead and we'll open this bad boy up. Um, this one actually looks pretty insane. This one's with the three guys on it. Oh. Dude, I cannot read anything on- Oh, I can read net weight and nutrition facts in the ingredients, but as far as anything else, I don't know what Benwert is, or Fet, or Clahondahydrate, or Sals. It looks like they have Hebrew on here. Like, I cannot read anything. <laughs> I can read calories, and fat cow, and protein. Four grams of protein? Heck yeah! So check this out. See if you can read this with me. Like, that's the, um, that's the ingredients, I guess. Yeah, I can't read that. I can read that. That's the nutrition label. Nutrition facts. Everything else? No idea. Okay, so let's use our little, uh, let's use our little booklet. And let's take a little look-see. Oh, look at that! I, it's a, oh, God, I shouldn't have read it. So, it's three Korochiki Holodets and horse. Radish. All right. Oh no. No. Oh no. Oh, I hate being able to read fast. These crispy breadsticks are flavored with holodets and horseradish. Hold up. Let's stop there. What the heck are holodets? Let us tell you. Listen. Holodets are a cold meat jelly, typically made from pig's feet, cow's feet, or chicken feet. Animal feet are a natural source of gelatin, so they make the perfect base for the mysterious meat jello. Typically in Russia, holodets are topped with a mustard or horseradish to make a one-of-a-kind dish. 
Though you're not eating the authentic cold meat jelly, you're welcome. You need to get a taste of Russian tradition with these crunchy flavorful sticks, so it just tastes like it. Okay, look at me shaking. Oh, gross. Let me, let, let's take a little trip back to Zach land. The last time I tried pineapple was like a year ago. The last time I tried something else that everybody else eats was like three months ago. I don't try new things. I don't venture out. I don't do anything. Hence why I'm starting the daily vlog. Hence why I'm doing stuff like this. Let's see kind of what kind of horizons I can expand to. But oh man. Oh. Oh my god, that doesn't look that bad. Oh, that doesn't smell that bad. It smells like the inside of Ikea. So they're just like little crunchy bread sticks. Oh, that's not bad. That tastes like, um, it's getting worse. Wait, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like, um, you know those brown chips in the Czech mix? That's what that tastes like. Yeah, that's what that tastes like. That's not that bad. Will I eat another one? Sure, why not? That one tastes a little grossy. <coughs> oh yeah, no. Now I can, uh, I can taste it. <laughs> now I can taste it. Okay. Chex Mix is coming back. I don't know what flavor I tasted, but that was really gross. Don't think about feet. Don't think about feet. Korov Korovka baked milk wafers with chocolate glaze. That seems kind of easy. Long before refrigerators were commonplace, ancient Russians had a variety of ways to keep milk from going sour. Some Russians would put a frog specifically a series called the Russian Brown Frog, into a bucket of milk to prevent it from spoiling. Others would simmer milk in the oven for eight hours, which fermented the milk and killed off any bad bacteria. While Russians may not have acquired the taste for frog milk, they did develop a love for the creamy, caramelized, burned milk concoction. To this day, it's, fla it's a flavor used often in baking, cooking, and these incredible chocolate-covered wafers. So I'm gonna eat burned milk right now. Okay, so it's just burned milk, not frog milk. That's actually really good. Good job, Russia, you didn't make anything out of frog milk. Those are actually really good. Holy God, that's really good. It tastes like, it's like a creamy milk chocolate. Um, it's like, it's like wafers, you know, the wafers that you get in the thing, but it's like a vanilla one, but that chocolate is super overpowering. It tastes almost like you're eating a donut, but like a crunchy donut, super sweet. That's actually really good. Uh, the next one that I'm gonna try is the Rot Front Chocolate Vanilla Candy. These might look like a simple Eastern European sweet, but their backstory is far more complicated. They're named after the phrase Rot Front, a greeting used by German workers who fought for workers' rights. As part of the communist organization, Roter Frontkampfverband, during USSR control, these particular candies became famous in Russia as food supplies dwindled, because for whatever reason, these candies were almost always available. The unique chocolate and vanilla treat holds a special place in the hearts of many Russians who lived during this period, as the candies were a bright spot in the daily life filled with many difficulties. Oh, that's nice. Go ahead and try that. They're like the little yellow. Okay, so let's try a rock front. So it's a, a, a chocolate vanilla candy. Oh, check that out. So it's just like a little, it smells like the kind of chocolate like my mom makes. So it's very like homemade. Wow. Chalky for sure. That's not bad. It's not good. Well, it's good. It's not great. It's except I'm actually kind of impressed with this box right now because I thought it was gonna be like insects. All right, so the next thing is I believe these, yeah, it's these big things. With like a cat with a motorcycle on it? <laughs> uh, I don't get that. It's a cat with a motorcycle on it. And then there's like some kids down here with like actual letters? Like some school assignment? All right, so these are uh, Ruziak Vanilla Corn Puffs. There's so much happening on the package of this snack, we had to pause and ask ourselves a few questions. What creature's on the package? It's a hamster. Oh, we looked it up. Uh, why is he riding a motorcycle? He goes on magical adventures throughout Russia. We also looked this up. One question we already know the answer to. Will you like these? Yes. Covered with a light vanilla coating, these fluffy light corn snacks will remind you more of a cereal than cheese curls, though the texture reminds us of the latter, aka okay, cheese curls. Go ahead and dig in. There's plenty to enjoy in this enormous package. So, let's go ahead and try that. Um, yeah, this thing is big. Holy cow. Let's go ahead and open up this bad boy. Oh wow, these things are big. Oh wow. Okay, obviously it's a cheese curl. That's a texture. The taste, oh, it tastes like that cereal. Was it honeycomb? 
I don't think it was honeycomb. Maybe it was honeycomb. I think it was honeycomb. But anyway, that's not bad. It's it's all right. I put it in the same category as the um, the rot front. Skazoshini strawberry mini sponge cake. Summer may be over, but this treat will give you a few last memories of the sweet, simple summer short strawberry shortcake. Sorry. The light, fluffy sponge cake is the perfect complement to the dense, fresh strawberry filling inside. Summer can't last forever, and we guarantee that this cake won't either. So, Russian is an intense language. I bet you $10 that says strawberry, but that is freaking insane. So that right there should say strawberry, but I don't think it does. Nixon, don't smell the Russian food. You're a German. Know your place. I just said know your place. You're not knowing your place. Well, you only get one? Holy cow, this is probably like five bucks or something. Oh, that smells so good. So here's the thing. I love the smell of strawberry. I don't, I have never had a strawberry in my life. Like a raw one? No, I've never had it. So that, again, that'll give you the extent. I've never had a pear. I've never had a strawberry. Um, I've never had like passion fruit, dragon fruit. A lot of things I've never had. Um, mainly because I was picky growing up. So let's go ahead and try this bad boy. This actually smells really freaking good. It smells like, you know those little Debbie strawberry shortcake swirls with like the icing on the bottom and it's rolled, it's a strawberry roll and it has the icing and then the strawberry like paste in the middle. Oh, those are so good. That's what this exactly smells like. But it's not as strong when you eat it, but I'm not even in the middle yet. So I guess I probably need to eat towards the middle. So inside it, there's like a small minute amount of whatever that is. Strawberry jam. The strawberry jam is not overpowering. Like you know how when you get like a, a cream filled donut, you have like donut around like the first quarter inch and then cream filling for everything so it just splooshes out. This is not like that. This is a very, very minute amount. Just enough to give it some taste. Wow, that's actually really good. Insert flashback of me in old Russia. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Wow, that is really good. Holy cow. I'm not gonna eat all of it. Eat all of it. Orange fruit jelly. Oof. Hooray, today's the day. The day for what you ask? The day you discover one of the best inventions created by modern mankind. It's a candy orange that looks and tastes exactly like a real orange. Unwrap the beautiful wrapper and you'll find the, the imposter just waiting to be peeled. Every piece is covered in a fine dusting of granulated sugar, love that which based on our non-scientific analysis makes it about 100 times better to eat than the real thing. All right, so orange fruit jelly is this guy with like a little bow. Ew, it's mushy. Is it like a jelly? Look. Ew. That's what the package looks like. Actually, it's like a little orange. So I just burped up that strawberry thing and it still tastes really freaking good. That's crazy. Let's open this guy up. Oh, oh wow. Look at that. Oh, it's like those, it's like orange slices. It, it's ingredients are drinking water as opposed to what kind of water. Wow, I don't even know how they stuck that together. Like the whole thing is covered in sugar. Mm. Tastes exactly like the ones that you get at the corner store. Like orange slices, that's this. <laughs> I feel like I'm in America. That's so good though. <laughs> All right, so we're about halfway through, are we? Oh no, God no. Uh, Red October Toffee Kreps, K-R-E-P-Y-S-H, I don't know what that is. In 1851, a German immigrant named Theodor Fernandez von Eminem? No, e nine. Moved to Moscow. He dreamed of starting a business and decided to start a small candy shop in Moscow. He sold candy to everyone from local townspeople to the Russian Tsar. Eventually, he sold his piece and eventually, he sold his business and under new ownership of the company, expanded into a huge factory on the banks of the Moscow River. During World War I and World War II, the Russian government seized control of the company. They switched the production lines to make military rations instead of chocolate and renamed the company Red October after Lemon's famous October 1917 German government takeover, which ushered in the communist rule. After World War II, the government-owned company went back to making candy, and to this day, it produces the most famous and popular candy in Russia. An example? This super sweet chewy caramel made with ground peanuts. You might not love the Kremlin, but one thing's for sure, it's hard not to love their candy. So that is this. That's this little guy. It's like a nice little peanutty toffee. Yeah. It's a sweet chewy caramel. It is a sweet chewy caramel that is 
Uh, hey look, they have UPCs in Russia. I didn't know that. Crazy. Maybe we're not so different after all. <laughs> it's not really chewy. It, it doesn't seem chewy. Like, it's pretty hard in the package. So let's open this up. You know what's crazy? Is that this stuff is completely brand new to me. I have never seen this stuff before in my life. I have never seen this package before. I've never seen this. I've never seen this. Yet, people in Russia see this stuff every single day. There's people that go to the gas stations, see these all the time, I'm guessing. That is so bizarre how, at this exact moment, somebody could be buying this. And they might take it home to their sick grandpa or something because he loves it. Like, who knows? That's so crazy. That's so crazy that at this moment, everybody is living out their life. That's awesome. All right, so this looks actually pretty gross. It's like cut into little segments, and it has like, oh, you can totally tell that it's like toffee. It has like the peanuts in it. Let's hope I'm not allergic to peanuts, huh? I think I'm allergic to peanuts. No, I'm just kidding. Wow, that's not even bad. That's really good. So here's the deal. What I'm gonna do in the description, we're gonna get to these in about two seconds, is I'm gonna put my code in, that way you guys can get these. This is freaking awesome. Um, but thank you Universal Yums for sending me this. This is actually pretty freaking solid. That's so mind blowing how this stuff is being produced and I didn't even know about it. Like it just makes you feel incredibly small to think that there's a whole other culture out there doing whatever it is that they're doing. Black concurrent candy. Oh, black currant, sorry. Uh, it's a small sweet berry that's the perfect fruit to grow in Russia as it can survive very cold temperatures. But black currant isn't the only isn't only found in Russia. It's a common fruit throughout all of Europe. If you were with us last December, you tried black currant in the form of the UK chewits. Prior to the 1900s, black currant was common in the US too. In the early 20th century, the federal government banned black currant farming as it was considered a threat to the logging industry. Huh. In fact, if you're living in Maine, New Hampshire, Virginia, Massachusetts, growing black currant is still illegal. Fortunately for all of us, the US government can't do anything about us eating these chewy blackcurrant sweets from Russia. Uh, so this has sulfur dioxide preservative in it. Um, what? Oh, wow. I thought that they would be black. I didn't predict that. Oh, wow, it's super soft. Look at that indent my tooth just made. I don't even know if you can see it, but there you go. Oh, wow. That's really good. No, I'm just kidding. It's really good. I've never had a blackberry, never had a blueberry. I don't eat that kind of stuff, which is very odd. A little tidbit fact about me. I am extremely picky, but this is a chance for me to open up view of the world and my taste buds and say, hey, you know what, let's try something new. Why not? That is actually really, really good. I wonder if that's what a blackberry tastes like. Or you know what, it could be what a black currant tastes like. Good thing they gave me four, because I'm gonna go through those real quick. My little brothers are extremely picky like me, and I tell them, just try new things. Uh, this is food for somebody else. It's not gonna kill you, unless you're allergic to it, mind you. Um, try it. Find, see what it is. If you like it, awesome. Now you can order these candies off of Amazon. If you do, if you don't like it, wash your mouth out, eat something else, and that's gone. Like you don't need to try it again. You know that you don't like it. Like I did that same thing with pineapple. I was like, I'm not gonna like it. I'm not gonna like it. I tried it and I loved it. And I was like, I've been missing out on this for how long? Because I was too scared to try it. Like when I'm going out to dinner with my friends now, they say, hey Zach, try this because it's really good. I'm like, all right, let me try it. I'll order it and try it, and I'm like, wow, that was really good. And now I have another dish to add to something that I can eat when I go out if I don't want to try something new. It's like, it's, it's, I know what it tastes like. So you're really, you have nothing to lose with trying new things. Like, my little brothers would freak out at trying barbecue chicken. What? Dude, just try the piece of chicken, try it with barbecue on it. He tried it and he was like, oh, that's really good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I was getting so upset, I was like, all you have to do is just try it. Like, that's it. And I've been trying a lot of new things in the food world because variety is the spice of life, my friend. You have to eat new things and try new things. Or why, what's the point of living if you're just gonna say shut it in a box and eat the same five meals a day? Like, that's freaking boring. Al Yanka chocolate bar with ice cream filling. In 1966, a socialist initiative was launched in Russia with the goal of mass producing affordable cho quality chocolate for everyone. As part of the initiative, a competition was held in Moscow for parents to submit photographs of their children to become the face of the chocolate brand. The winning photo was an illustration of an anonymous eight-month-old girl. The identity of the girl has remained unknown, with rumors swirling that it was Stalin's daughter, a reclusive Russian nun, or the daughter of a famous photographer. None of these theories have panned out, so now it's just become a national hobby for women in Russia to claim that they are the mysterious girl in the package. <laughs> The last lawsuit against the company happened in May with the janitor claiming the company owed her $3 million for using her picture on the package. 
We might never find out who is the real face beyond Alonkia, but one thing is certain, behind the cute face is an excellent chocolate bar. So this is ice cream, which is crazy. It's probably like a dried out, dehydrated ice cream, which actually looks pretty good. There's the cute little baby. Hey, that's me! What? Why are they using my face? So, there it is. Here's your um, nutrition info, which I cannot read. 15, 5, 15, and 10, 2, 17. No, what bothers me is the 15, 5, 15. That's the one that kind of worries me. 10, 2, 17, I don't know how Russians read dates. But if you want information about this candy bar, uh, go ahead and call 8, 800, 200, 55, 99. www.uniconf.ru or www.alenka.ru. Let's go ahead and try this bad boy. This thing looks, please be good. Your chocolate with ice cream in you. You better be freaking amazing. It smells like um, the chocolate that you get when you have the Easter bunnies, the hollow Easter bunnies. That's the kind of chocolate that it smells like, or it smells like Cadbury. Dude, that's like really good. I'm not gonna lie. That's like super good. Oh my God. The chocolate definitely reminds me of Cadbury. It's very milky. Um, and it's very like thick. Like when you put it in your mouth, it kind of just like melts and it just stays there. Very, very rich. Very, very rich chocolate. Micaello chocolate covered Apricot with walnut. I'm, I'm kind of scared to try this because I don't know what kind of nut I'm allergic to, but I know that I'm allergic to one of them. And I know that my dad had um, uh, a bottle of mixed nuts on his uh, desk and I grabbed some and I ate them and I don't know which ones were in it, but my throat started to swell up. So I don't know if I want to try this. Well, let me read the description anyway, as I'm thinking. Based out of Moscow, the company that makes this chocolate is world-renowned for their combinations of fruit and chocolate. You can try dried kiwis with dark chocolate, limes with white chocolate, or pears with almonds and dark chocolate. We choose to go with one of the most unique combinations we could find, chocolate-covered apricots and walnuts. A fresh apricot envelops a whole walnut, which is then covered with a rich dark chocolate glaze. Uh, will all these flavors go together perfectly right or terribly wrong? It's up to you to find out. I'm kind of actually really scared to try that, mainly because I think it might've been a walnut that I ate. I think I'm gonna have to sit this one out because A, there's no one here to call 911 if something goes wrong. And I can't get on the phone, I'm going I think I'm gonna pass on this one because A, I don't really like dark chocolate. B, I've never had an apricot. C, I think walnuts will kill me. So I'm gonna go with, ah, it's decent. I'm, I'm sorry guys, I have to pass on it. Oh my God, I don't wanna die. Uh, how else will I keep eating this amazing food? Which reminds me, orange. Rusco chocolate with sunflower seeds and cranberry. As you're eating this, you only have one man to thank for it, Peter the Great. But to understand why, you have to go way, way back. Let's start with Christopher Columbus. Sunflowers are one of the few food crops that naturally originated in the present day region of the United States. When the early Spanish explorers came to America, they were amazed by the huge flowers and brought back seeds to Europe for cultivation. The Russian Tsar, Peter the Great, discovered the seeds on a trip to Holland and brought them back to his home in Russia. During this time, the Russian Orthodox Church had a strict list of foods you were forbidden from eating during Lent. Because sunflowers were so new, their seeds and oils were not included in this list. Catholics in Russia indulged in sunflower seeds and oils during Lent, and the crop has been a huge phenomenon in Russian ever since. Russia now grows the most sunflowers in the entire world, and no Russian home is complete without the bowl of sunflower seeds sitting on the kitchen table. Enjoy a unique spin on the Russia-loved U.S. export in the form of this unique, sweet and savory cranberry sunflower sweet. So I took like a half an hour break. <laughs> but you didn't know it because of editing. Uh, when we last left off, it was the Rusco chocolate and sunflower seeds and cranberry. Let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. Uh, to be honest, um, I've never had a cranberry either, so gonna learn today. It's like a dark chocolate, which I'm not fond of in the slightest. Yeah, let's just bite into it, see what happens. Let's see, sunflower seeds and cranberry. Not allergic, probably not allergic. Let's find out. Oh, this is gonna be really gross. Okay, so it's not that gross. Oh God, I thought it was gonna be really gross. It's like looking into like a, it's like looking into like a fruit log. I was like, oh, this is gonna be gross. It just tastes like the inside of Ikea. That's all it is. Mmm. Ooh, and then dark chocolate and orange is really good together. So I just made my own snack. Yay, Russia. This one is one that I'm not excited about. The same as the three amigos. We have the three amigos. Same right there. Alcohol, ukulele, fishing pole, or guitar and fishing pole. Well, if you could take a look at what that is. Um, what does that look like? And then what does that look like? Uh, if you said salmon, you would be correct. And if you said cheese, 
you would also be correct. Um, so that's why I'm not really looking forward to this at all. Um, I have not eaten fish up until about six months ago. I did not eat fish for probably close to like 16 years. I had a bad experience with it, not a fan. Since then I've had maybe like one or two. I've had some tilapia fillets and I had some salmon fillets. Uh, but that's not my go-to at all. Uh, my go-to is chicken for protein. Three, karokishi salmon and cheese. Salmon and cheese isn't a combination you typically find unless you're living in Russia. Salmon is often baked with a thick layer of mayonnaise and cheese on top. Or it's made into a rich, cheesy soup. Or it's baked into breadsticks, as is the case with this snack. Don't be alarmed. This unique salmon and cheese flavor comes through as buttery and cheesy rather than fishy and strange. At least we think so. If you'd like to try the dish that inspired the snack, check out the recipe on the next page, which looks like mayonnaise. Ooh, that actually looks really good. It has onions on it. Oh man, is that, is that um, salmon and cheese breadsticks? That looks really good. But I don't see myself having, there's no bread in that. Oh. I am not a fan. Oh, is it just like the bread? It is the bread, it's just a flavor. Okay. Oh, it's giving me goosebumps. It, it smells like cardboard with like some it's not really like a fishy overtone. It's very hard to describe. I swear to God, if this doesn't have uh, buttery and cheesy as my first impression, I'm gonna throw this back across the room. Buttery and cheesy it is. Salmon. Focus. Oh, that's not good at all. Mmm. Oh, that's not good. Ow. Oh, that's not good at all. Mom! <laughs> I'm out of meatloaf! Oh, that's actually really gross. Oh, get away. Oh, wash it down. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, don't breathe out your nose. Don't taste it. Breathe through your mouth. Mm-mm. No, no, no. Oh, that was so gross. Oh, on a scale of one to never again, I'm gonna say freaking never again. Oh, that was gross. Ugh. Oh. I don't want to try that garlic bread now. I don't want to try that breadstick. A Tula gingerbread with Lamoka. Lacoma. La, la, Lacomka. Gingerbread is one of Russia's oldest and most loved sweets. First brought to Russia in the 9th century by the ancient Egyptians, it was originally called honey bread and made from rye, flour, honey, and berry juice. It got the name gingerbread in the 13th century when Spices from India and the Middle East were used to make bread spicier and more pungent. What you have in your box is the most famous gingerbread in Russia, called the Tula. Records of Tula gingerbread go back as far as 1685, making it the oldest gingerbread maker in Russia. You'll get a taste of tradition with this particular bread, made from an age-old recipe of filled apples, apricots, sugar, and honey. Uh, why does it have antioxidants in it? Uh, E320, E321, E310, and E330. Okay, good, I burped and I tasted orange and chocolate. If I would've tasted that stupid salmon, I would've been mad. <clears throat> Still no salmon, okay, good. Oh, that was gross. Oh, I'm gonna give it to my mom, never try it. it doesn't smell that bad. I can see this smelling like an old house. Like, what does this say? I'm like, what does it say? I don't freaking know. It says, I don't even know which way to hold it. Like, how would you hold that? How would you hold that to know what it says? Magic. Russian food is magical. Remember that. I hope somebody from Russia is watching my video. That way they'll be like, oh yeah, I buy those all the time. Why don't you like those? Cause that'd be awesome. Oh wow. Okay. So it's like soft. It's very soft. Is there anything in it or is it all just gingerbread? There is stuff in it. It's sort of like a jam. Apparently this is filled apples, apricot, sugar, and honey. And this is extremely sweet. 
Holy gosh. I guess maybe I know what apricot tastes like now because I don't ever have tasted that ever. That's not bad. It's not the greatest. This has been an awesome experience. Uh, thank you for joining me. And you know what we can do? You guys can order it. And then when I do my video, you can open yours up and do it with me. And we can see if we kind of have the same taste buds and the same reaction. We can kind of do it as like a whole family. Uh, that would be stupid awesome. So order this, try it for a month, see how it goes. And then if you like it, so Universal Yums, you can do choose between two sizes, the Yum Box, six or more snacks in each box. The Yum Yum Box is 12 or more snacks in each box, more variety for more yums. Free shipping on all boxes. Start a subscription or give us a gift. So you can do one, three, or six months. Um, so do it for one month and do it for the month of December and get um, far, far away lies the Emerald of the Equator. Now independent, the Dutch were once their invader. They left behind a legacy of many good eats, ginger cookies, chocolates, and barley mint sweets. So the Yum Box is $14 per month. The Yum Yum Box is $25 per month. Try it for a month. Get the Yum Yum Box because I think that that's what this one is. This one has a ton of stuff in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I think I got a lot. That's 13 different ones, but I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I got 18. Oh, so wait, so there you go. So the Yum Box is six or more snacks, and then the Yum Yum Box is 12 or more. So I got 12. So I got like 13 or whatever, and then I got however many I just counted. Do it once, $25. Tell your mom, say, Mom, for Christmas, I want to try this out. We'll try it when I do my video. Uh, when I get mine, we'll do the video. We'll eat it together, and then we'll see kind of what's uh, we'll see what's going on. Down in the description will be my coupon code. Use that, dude, guys. Let's do this. This is freaking awesome. Don't be boring. Don't stay within the small confines of your your one little. Eh, I just want to try peanut butter jelly sandwiches for the rest of my life. Like I got it from someone in my family. I'm not gonna tell who. But they went to work, and the only thing that they ate was peanut butter sandwiches every day for lunch for like 20 years, like, what? Time to branch out and do new things. Um, mind you, there's four people in my family that are over 20, so don't try to deduce anything. Um, but try it, this is freaking awesome. The only one thing that I didn't like is that salmon thing, but it's over, done. Uh, oh, Bad memory, it's, it's burned into my brain, but it's good now. Um, so yeah, guys, try it if you want. Um, let me know if you guys want to see more of this stuff. Uh, but as of right now, it looks like our time is up. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a comment down below whatever you are thinking. And I will see you guys next time. Peace!